I've been thinking about this for a while now. And uh, so chapter 433, um, I got some thoughts. I got some thoughts about, you know, the whole Ellie getting the silver light and just kind of, I guess I'm just going to kind of break down some of the stuff that happened in this chapter. But, um, but yeah, I've been thinking about this for a while, trying to like gather my thoughts and, you know, really figure out what do I think about this chapter. And, uh, so let me get into it. Let me get into it. Right. So, so first off, Alice, Alice gets the, uh, secret stone from Arthur. And, uh, I guess it really kind of confused me because I'm just like, wait, so she can activate the secret stone. Cause I read it, I read it, like, I, I guess the way I perceived it was a couple of different ways. Right. So I'm just like, oh, okay. So she, um, she's, a, she's able to use her healing magic, right? Her meal, her healing magic is part of Jen. Jen can manipulate ether, all that thing, all that stuff. Right. And I'm just like, okay, so maybe her magic is what triggers it because that's what it said. It said that, uh, the stone draws in its own ether, like from the atmosphere. So the stone draws in its own ether and then she just needs to trigger it. So I'm just like, okay, cool. So maybe she's just triggering it once it gets full of ether, you know? So, so that's why like when you use it, it has to recharge, you know, in a couple days or whatever, because it needs time to be able to draw in its own ether. That's what I originally thought, but the way that Arthur describes it when he when he looked at her using it, using Realmheart, he said that her 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 mana or uh, her healing magic, I guess that's the more accurate, her healing magic kind of like guided the ether towards the stone, and then the stone's ether kind of like touched her and stuff like that. So I'm just like. Wait, so now her magic can guide the ether toward the stone? But I thought the stone like drew in its own ether, so I was just it was it was just really confusing. So I guess at the end of this I really don't know exactly what how it really works. You know, because you know we got Renia. Renia was able to use her um her magic to like pretty much look into fate. You know, to be able to try to figure out what's the right course of action based off of you know what type, what type of ending she sees, and so I mean that that has something to do with ether, but it was never specifically said that like okay she used ether to use that ability, you know, because her sister had that ability too. They said it might have been yeah, it, I don't think it was something that was unique to elves, but we only know of elves being able to do it, so. Maybe it was, but they never specified that it was. But we knew that, you know, her ability was related to the healing magic and the gen. You know, they have gen ancestry, which means that they populated with elves too. So, so yeah, I guess uh, they populated with everybody, right? They populated with um, the phoenix race, human race. Maybe there's some dwarven. Uh, oh yeah, I think there are some dwarves. Yeah, 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 because it was a one check. Yeah, so they got a, a, a dwarven healer. So they populated with dwarves, the humans, the elves, the uh, the phoenix race. Like they, they you know, they reproduce with everybody. So yeah, so I guess I just wanted to kind of hit on that because we don't really know exactly what that really means. Like, is can Ellie eventually be able to activate these, you know, artifacts with her raw mana? I don't know, man. Like. We need some clarity on that. That's essentially a lot of stuff we need clarity on. It's a lot of like pieces that's just kind of like missing that were just kind of like just floating out there. But anyway, so she gets the secret stone, so she'd be able to uh, be able to observe Arthur or Ellie because apparently it only works on Arthur and Ellie. Um, I'm guessing at this point because he's giving it to her. I guess this stone is not really going to be of much use anymore I could, I could see it still being of use right let's say arthur wanted to give let's say arthur wanted to give uh i'm thinking about this now let's say arthur wanted to give alice a message right but he couldn't actually contact her he could like make a note or some shit and like put it up so whenever she comes and she checks on him or whatever she's able to read the note and be like oh he wants me to do this and he wants me to tell viri and this or something like that or i don't know I'm just kind of throwing shit out there because I'm trying to think of another reason that the stone would be useful and 
I guess it could play a role in the future, but I'm guessing it doesn't really matter at this point. We're not going to find out if the stone could be used to, like, look at a grown-up. Could it be used to look at Kez's again? Or could it be used to, like, look at other people? How does it actually work? Does this people you got to be really close to? Could he use it to look at Kara? He's kind of close to Kara. Like, he's never even tried anybody else, so... I don't know. The stone is kind of like a just... Nah, we don't really know what's going to happen with that. Uh, one more thing that we got from this this section of the chapter was that Avon Spatium and Vivum apparently because I, I never read this I, like I mean I don't have photographic memories you know so I can't remember everything that I read and be able to draw it but I don't remember us ever getting any knowledge that Avon Spatium and Vivum is actually in the atmosphere and you can like distinguish the difference between the three Arthur never said this before so this is new information as far as I know so apparently this artifact interacts with Vivum and it's Vivum in the atmosphere. You know, because at first I thought it was just like, oh yeah, it's just the particles. You got the purple particles, you got the red particles, which is the fire. You got, I think, the yellow particles, which is the earth, the green particles, which is the air, and then the blue is the water. I think that's right. But... I thought it was just purple particles, but apparently there's a distinguished or, uh, you know, a, a difference between the purple particles where it's Avon, Spatium, and Vivum. So there's also that. Maybe there's a fourth one, you know, kind of like how the the mana has four different elements, right? The water, fire, earth, and, um, and, and wind. Maybe, maybe, maybe Vivum has four and maybe there's a fourth one. Maybe the fourth one's fate, you know, or maybe it's something else that we just haven't really found out about. I don't know, because it just kind of makes sense four and four instead of four and three. That's what I'm kind of thinking of. But um, but yeah, so that's new information. So um, I wonder if that's ever going to get brought up again. But Alder Sword, okay, Alder Sword, him showing it, you know, it makes sense because you know Alder's death was you know completely stupid. So we actually have some sort of a purpose for him dying now, which is the sword and. Um, them being shown that he's actually dead and, you know, they got revenge or justice, whatever you want to call it. You know, obviously, um, obviously, uh, Virian isn't really too happy about it. Like, he's just kind of like, okay, one person dead. All right. But that's not going to replace the millions of people that died. So, um, there's that. The sword being able to choose or the weapon, I should say, being able to choose someone else that really took me by surprise i was not expecting that at all and uh I ended up choosing ellie which goes into my poll question which was uh you know do you think that ellie should have gotten the sword or the weapon and uh i don't know man like this really just kind of came out of nowhere for me because it was just like i tacy spear i have to go back and reread the chapter when he finally gives it to them um, Tasty Spear, I don't think Tasty Spear ever did any sort of like choosing. I don't think he ever chose anyone. I think all of them held it, you know, v uh, not very, uh, Vare, Micah, and Byron, they all held it. But I think Byron just decided to keep it. Like, and then, you know, Byron can like manipulate it with his hand and shit, make it move and go places and stuff like that. So, like, I don't know if his hand or his mind. But, like, they never show any sort of, like, oh, you know, it, like, it, it goes in all their hands, and then it goes into um, Byron's hands, and then it's, like, some sort of, like, weird feeling that happens, or it hums, or it, like, lights up, or, like, anything to signify that there's some sort of bond with the weapon and Byron. Like, I, I don't remember any of this shit. Let, let me know. Let me know if you remember, because I haven't gone back and read the chapter yet. But, like, I, mean, I just kind of wish this was set up better because it, it really just kind of came out of nowhere for me it, it came out of nowhere the weapons being bonded and stuff like that like i wasn't expecting that and it just came out of nowhere so that ended up happening and then and then i guess they also kind of set it up with like uh ren saying that a weak bond overcome by you know a weak bond can be overcome by a strong spirit and i'm just like okay so you just kind of added it in to try to make that make sense for Byron getting it but we still didn't get any sort of like bonding with Byron like we didn't get any bonding like I don't understand how like I, I, I don't get it 
I'm just kind of at a loss at this point. Maybe you guys feel the same way. Maybe you guys feel the same, but uh, I'm just kind of at a loss. And then I guess the uh, one big thing that I guess I'll take away from this was that this chapter went, it, it just seemed that it went by like really fast. It went by really fast and it just kind of like, it kind of sped through the whole meeting, right? Because I'm, I'm thinking about it like this. Arthur's been gone for a long time, right? So let's go back to when he was gone after the situation with uh, with uh, him making a portal and then going back to the sanctuary, right? So he was gone for, I think Byron said a year, right? Don't be gone for a year this time. So he was gone for like a year, roughly, somewhere around there. And like, and then he finally comes back. You know, he comes back through the portal, fights Tacy, and is able to bring them back to safety and whatnot. You know, he starts to try to take over um, Dicathan and stuff, you know, liberate them, right? So that was like, that was that period was like the longest he'd been there from the moment that he got out of the portal to the moment that he went and liberated all the rest of the different areas or whatever. Um, that was the longest he'd been there. And then he left to go to Ephiotis to go meet with Kezis, right? He left and did that. Then he came back stayed for a little while but then he left with ellie with uh with lyra with micah he left and they went into the relic tombs and we don't even know how long they were going for but they were going for i mean let's just throw a time period out there let's say it was going for like i don't know a month maybe two weeks to a month let's say somewhere somewhere around there and because remember they did the whole little training montage where they kind of all like you know what they kept on redoing the um the thing so they can get more efficient so that that probably took a while right so they was doing that and then remember immediately after he came back from there he left and went to go see Mordain in old deer and then that's when he was gone for the two months and then he come and then he was gone for two months he's like oh shit i've been gone for two months then he comes back and then the minute that he comes back he rescues kara all that shit the dragon showed up all that shit and then now he's leaving again. So, like, he hasn't even been able, like, the only person who really explained everything that happened to him was Virion. Virion was the only person he actually sat down and explained, like, oh, here's everything I went through. Here's everything that happened in Alacria while I was gone for, like, almost a year, nine months to a year, whatever the fuck it was. And I'm just, like, he hasn't really even had time to really be there to be able to kind of, like, you know, talk to everybody, get things set up and whatever. So, I mean... I really thought that this meeting that they were going to have was going to be like a long, drawn-out meeting. People going to have all these questions, like, you know, um, you know, where have you been all this time? You keep leaving, like, you know, but you're not giving us any information. You know, these dragons showed up, but you never told us that you had some deal with Kezis and that dragons might show. Like, you never said any of this shit. So it's just like all these things are kind of happening out of nowhere. I mean, they know that he's on his side. He, they know that he's on their side. They know that everything he's doing is for the protection of um, for Dicatha. They, they know that. But it's just like they're kind of just up and just just left out in the way. Like Virion doesn't really consider himself the commander anymore. You know, he said that like the elves. You know, they still respect him as the commander, but he doesn't really like. You know, he doesn't have that like authority or the actual respect from everybody else as like the commander, um, just just from the elves. And so it's just like, who's in charge? You know, like we, we still don't know in charge. We don't still don't know who's in charge, which is why I keep on saying over and over again, like Arthur needs to be in charge. But but then again, he can't really be in charge if he keeps leaving every ten minutes. You know what I'm saying? So he has to like I don't know, give some type of orders and directions, which they were following what he was doing. Like, oh, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do this. Here's what Gideon and Ren are going to be doing. You know, so I mean, they're following orders. So he's like technically kind of sort of in charge, but like. I don't know. I, I really wish they would have kind of like went into like more of like, you know, Arthur, like, you know, just kind of kind of giving us a sense of just how everybody's feeling. You know, how's Byron feeling? Because, you know, Byron um, really cares about Virion. You know, how is Virion feeling about all this stuff? Alice is kind of just like, well, OK, I guess you can take my daughter into battle and we're just we're just kind of cool. Like we ain't having no like conversations about, OK, wait, you took her the first time. I'll let you do that. But now you're about to take her and put her in danger the second time. It was like. 
we didn't get nothing. We didn't get no pushback. We didn't get no, like, all of a sudden, now Alice is like, well, okay, go ahead, Ellie. You can go fight and battle with your brother, and, you know, I hope I see you again. <laughs> you know, even though I was extremely distraught because my husband died not that long ago, you know, Reynolds didn't, it wasn't that long ago when Reynolds had died. So it's just like, you know, still kind of overcoming that grief. And then now your daughter's getting put into harm's way and your son's getting put into harm's way. And just like, now you potentially can lose both. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, but I understand they, they did have that conversation with us about, you know, we got to fight, you know, you're in danger. We're also in danger too. You're risking your life. We got to be able to risk our lives too. But like, now they're just kind of like inviting Ellie's a danger. Anyways, um, I just wish we would have had more conversation. It was just missing more conversation, more back and forth. Um, Gideon, you know, Gideon was like, you just got back. Yeah, I'm leaving again. Just like, you know, with the whole, the, like the whole training and the, the, like what happened to the fucking, the staff with giving them the, um, the, uh, the spell forms and shit. Like, has anybody else gotten any spell forms? Like we don't get any information, you know? So I'm just kind of just, everything just happened just really really quickly and i just wish that we actually took like a chapter to just kind of like sit down explain talk to people whatever but then again part of me is like i understand that like this is a time sensitive situation right it's time sensitive they need to get to sarah's right away so he doesn't really have time to really kind of explain everything that's going on but i mean he had time to have that meeting and all they talked about was silverlight they talked about gideon and ren and the plans on what type of weapons they're going to make because they need to empower the humans the elves and the dwarves and stuff like that even the ones who don't manipulate mana so they talked about that a little bit and they said you know he said he wanted to direct your questions towards ren but that was it and then he was like listen i'm gonna be out of here i don't know how long i'm gonna be gone but y'all help out ren y'all help out gideon and don't make enemies with the dragons you know don't hide where i'm gone you can let them know where i left and where i've gone to and i'll be back peace out like that's like that was it that was just that was that was what happened oh yeah and ellie got you know silverlight so yeah it was just kind of i just kind of wish we got more i kind of like i understand the speed like the rush he's in to go and see what's going on with Sarah's right time sensitive but like I don't know man like he just shows up and then he's gone he then he shows up and then he's gone and then he shows up and then he's gone. like that's just kind of been the plan so this is the part I want to kind of dive into a little bit right Ellie so I was reading some comments and one of these comments got me thinking Ellie has a character how has she been set up? You know, um, pretty much they were saying that um, Ellie is just getting so many power-ups that she's progressing faster than Arthur was before he ruined his, uh, his uh, before he ruined his, man- his manicure. And so, like, she's on the, like, she's on a project, she's on the trajectory of being stronger than Arthur was back then. And it's just like, she's only 14. Like, Arthur wasn't even for, like, I mean, at this point, she's probably going to be stronger. I I mean, I I would say so. She's probably, she probably maybe is right now. I don't know. But she's probably close to, if not stronger than Arthur was when he was 14. And if you just think about that, that's crazy. That's crazy. Now, I'm not going to apply boo to her strength just because. I'm not applying Sylvie to Arthur's strength when he was 14 either, right? Just, just, I'm just like, just pure like knowledge and magic and being able to manipulate it, being able to, you know, being skilled with it and stuff like that. Like she's close to him, if not past him at this point. And then now she has this weapon. And so it's like, she's just getting power up after power up after power up. And I'm just kind of like, okay, does this really make sense for her to be getting all these power ups? And uh, the way I look at it, is like this. I think that Ellie has been set up as a character to be very powerful from the beginning. That's what I think, right? So think back to back when she was a kid, right? So it was a it was the first thing I had talked about was that she has pure raw mana. She doesn't have an affinity towards any sort of element. Now, Arthur said that, oh, she's going to at some point, but thus far, well, she hasn't had any infinity yet or affinity towards any sort of element or anything. And so she's still just using pure mana. 
And so, me, that was always strange because they never really talked about anybody else. He talked about it as a like, oh yeah, you know, some people do that. But like, it was never mentioned anybody else who can actually only use raw mana. So she's kind of unique in that sense, right? She's unique from everybody else, which she's only using pure mana. And then she ended up, you know, with Helen and everything, she ended up taking a bow and arrow. Now, with the archery stuff, she always kind of came up to me as a worker, right? Like, she was like, I'm going to work, and I'm going to work, and I'm going to work. I have extremely high work ethic, and I'm going to work to get really good with these arrows. Remember, she was, like, firing and training with her arrows, and Arthur was like, wait, you've been shooting your bow for how long? Like, yeah, all night till the sun went down. Like, literally out there hours and hours, like four, five, six, six hours, just practicing with the bow, practicing, just practicing. Like, her ass is extremely high work ethic, right? So I'm just like, okay, so she really just wanted to work to get strong. Another thing, another thing that she um she was set up as a character to be is that um she wanted to be meaningful, right? So I remember when she was young and they had went to the wall and stuff like that, she desperately wanted to go with Arthur to the wall and she wanted to be useful. So she wanted to be like a fighter. She wanted to be somebody who was, you know, who was useful, who felt like they were helping, right? So she always wanted that. So that's why he took her with her to go to the wall and, and whatnot. And so I think that she was always set up to kind of be more powerful. So then after that had happened, um, so she ended up getting, she, she got Boo, right? She got Boo. And then she ended up, the next power up she got was the, I think the, I think the regalia. Yeah, I think the regalia um, spell form was the next one she had got. And so... <clears throat> All right. See, I don't know, man. Like th- th- this whole the whole staff that can give spell forms is like it's really taking a backseat. Like that thing is supposed to be extremely powerful. Right, let, let me let me not go on a tangent on that. I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit. But she ended up getting the regalia, and so that gave her a power up, an extremely high power up. And so well, she's still learning about the regalia, still needs to be able to master, and so she can potentially do all this like type of healing shit. You know, recovering people's mana cores, who's like completely drained away. Like, you know, um, I'm thinking to myself, like, like, what is the potential that she has? Because it's, it's probably extremely high, right? Now, and then once that happens, she gets Silverlight. Now, I'm thinking that Silverlight probably chose her, which I hope they touch on this at some point to where there's like a, a meaning behind it. He probably chose, the, the, not he, but the, um, well, she, right? Silverlight probably chose her because it has something to do with either her regalia or something to do with just her raw mana or or, or something um but hopefully that it gets talked about soon but um but yeah she's kind of always been made as like a fighter to me that's why he's been taking her with her that's why they did the training and um in that little like you know dark you know you know that evil black glob area in the relic tomb that's why they did the whole training montage there i think she's just kind of being set up as just like a a really powerful character like sooner rather than later her trajectory is like okay ellie's 16 years old she's gonna be stronger than a lance i mean honestly that's like where her trajectory is like she's kind of becoming like a extremely powerful badass and we don't even know what the potential is with this this weapon like (laughs) <laughs> I can only imagine. So she's she's kind of she's kind of crazy at this point. And then she's got Boo. Then she got the Beast Will. Man, <sighs> she's she's gonna be she's gonna be crazy. She's looking like she's gonna be crazy. And so yeah, so I thought I kind of think she was set up to be powerful from the beginning. So I'm not really that surprised. The one thing I dislike is that the the minute that she got the regalia. I was thinking that, okay, we're going to have Curtis. Curtis going to get, you know, he's going to get um, a spell form, right, from the staff. You know, and then you're going to have, uh, what's his sister name? Kathleen. She's going to get one. And then I was thinking Alice is going to get one. Like, the powerful the powerful people, if not everybody. Well, we know everybody can't get it because Emily is, you know, she only has so much mana to use. But, you know, like, every day, like, giving somebody some some power ups power ups power ups and they just never they never touched on that so that's why it's like it's like to me it's like he's kind of deliberately making ellie as powerful as he can because she got that regalia which i wasn't surprised she got the regalia like i wasn't surprised by that no alice will probably get a regalia maybe curtis and um 
What, what, didn't uh, Gideon? Gideon got a regalia? Or no? Did he get it? He might have gotten an emerald. Yeah, an oh, emblem. Not emerald. An uh, emblem. Because I know it's like Mark, Crest, Emblem, and then Regalia. I think that's the four. So yeah, I think he got an uh, a emblem. Uh, ho hopefully I'm thinking about this right. So yeah, so it's just like the fact that she hasn't even... Or nobody else has even gotten a regalia. Nobody else gotten any powers from the staff. Like, so far, all we know is that Emily has a power up from the staff. Gideon has a power up from the staff. I, I said Emily. Ellie. Ellie has a power up from the staff. Gideon has a power up from the staff. And then that one dwarf, he got, uh, uh, he got a mark. And that's it. Nobody else. And I'm just like, okay, this is like drastically being underused. Like, why isn't everybody else getting these power-ups and only Ellie is getting the power-up and Gideon getting the power-up? Even though Gideon's power-up seems to go towards his, like, creative thinking than anything else. Ellie's power-up is more like a, I don't know, healing potential fucking mana bombs that can, like, wipe out cities and shit. Like, <laughs> her shit can be crazy, man. But, um... But yeah, I guess I guess what I want to ask you guys this is like, you know, do you think that Emily or I keep calling her Emily? Do you think that Ellie should have gotten Silverlight? Is she being set up to be a powerhouse character? And uh, does all this shit make sense? Because I don't know, I don't know. Ellie getting Ellie getting another power up against Silverlight. I'm not mad at that. I guess what I'm what I'm not liking is the fact that she got that regalia and nobody else has got any other power ups. Like, okay, where the fuck is everybody else's power ups? That's like the only thing that I have a problem with. But I don't know. But that's pretty much what I want to talk about with this chapter. I mean, I thought the chapter was good. I thought that we needed more time with more people's reactions to Arthur and you know everything that's been going on, him being gone. Maybe they got a lot of questions and stuff. But other than that, that's it for me. I should be coming up with, uh, you know, Friday's chapter um, reaction, either Friday or Saturday. And uh, I'll check you guys out in the next video. Peace.